Hello again, welcome in. It's Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network, digging into the garage area, talking to the folks to make the race cars go around in circles. I'm Steve Post, lead pit road reporter for Motor Racing Network, joined by 25-time winning, championship winning crew chief, Todd Gordon. Hello, Todd. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Fantastic. Great good weekend of racing. Good stuff at Richmond, that's for sure. Real good stuff up there. Um, Cup Series. What, what was what was your take on the racing and then ultimately Richmond strategy? But what was your take on it all? I, I kind of what I expected. You put you put a you put less downforce in these cars than they've ever raced up there, and all of a sudden in the first stint before the competition caution, you got Ricky Stenthouse running up at the wall. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. It's, it was uh, and driving forward. Um, you know, I think they had a I think they had a pit stop issue where they knocked a bleeder off the caliper in the back, and it cost them, but. Um, you know, several cars all over the racetrack. I thought, uh, I thought the racetrack got kind of wide. It was a uh, bigger tire fall off than we, I think, historically seen there. A little bit more lap time fall off, I guess is what I should yeah, call it. Yeah. Um, I thought it, you know, strategy played out. I think there were called pit road, how you mm -hmm. call the race. I think there were some opportunities for guys to take advantage of things. And um, all in all, you know, kudos to Josh Berry. How about that strategy? And that's that's coming back. That's that took advantage of being in a different position. That actually, Michael McDowell and Josh Berry, yep. both uh, both were back there in the teens, and uh, decided to run long. Caution comes out, cycles him forward, and and Josh had a. I mean, he had a run at it at, at yep. a win. I mean, he was front row against Kyle yep. on a couple restarts and uh, didn't get didn't get the win, but a solid second place finish and and great great event. Heard some post race from Michael McDowell. And and again, agree. Josh Peter or uh, Jacob Peterson did a great job. Mm -hmm. Tom Gray over there leading Josh Berry's effort did a great job. But Michael said, "But remember, we were on the lead lap, which allowed us to play this strategy. Yes. So we're we're. It's not like we're throwing a hail mary from thirty second. We're 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 throwing a hail mary from fifteenth, and making a good call and getting a sixth place finish out of a fifteenth place run. I did a breakdown on this on Inside okay. the Race okay. this yeah. week okay. as well. well so you but uh, but but yeah, it's it's uh you know solid. Michael ran anywhere from 15th to 20th all day long on a lead lap in, in, yep. in a, a very competitive on longer runs. That's, that's an accomplishment at Richmond to right. just maintain, especially when you start back there, Yeah, you know, to, to maintain, they were, they were solid. They had a good day, but they, they, they made a good day better, better. Yeah, by, by taking, you know, look at the whole piece. And if they run that and it runs all the way out, they're probably going to lose three or four spots. They're going to go a lap down if they run it all the way out. If it ends up going those 88 laps, yeah, which is the same segment length that William Byron tried to do it last year from. Correct. And we had a heck of a race at the end. So, um, it, it hey, I I would look at. I think it made sense. You'd look at the history that we've had this year. All the drivers talking about there's no you know respect. People run each other over. We've <laughs> had more cautions which, at the end of these which, races. Yes. I think I'd run that thing long. And yeah. they did, and they did a really good job of it. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, a couple of notes that I have on here. Um, Lord knows whatever's going on with Louvers, okay? Whatever's <laughs> going on with that, and the drama continues, and there's a lot of angst in the garage area. Um, Jordan Bianchi with The Athletic did an absolutely wonderful piece where he talked on the condition of anonymity of nine crew chiefs and three competition directors. There's a lot of angst. One thing I think this does show is depth of organization, though. When you look at, and, and, and you guys you guys built that at Penske as far as I go, depth of organization, Herrick Motorsports, Kyle Larson had Kevin Mendering on the pit box. Mm -hmm. Kevin had a year with Jimmy Johnson. It was his first career win, but has a lot of depth, a lot of experience. Alex Bowman went back to Greg Ives. And then we had two new crew chiefs. William Byron had Brian Campy and, and Josh Berry had Tom Gray. But that depth of those organizations is strong. Brian Campy was one of the engineers on Brad Keselowski's 2012 championship run. Okay, so, so yeah. Um, he came out of yeah. Penske at one point, know him, know right. him decently well. Uh, a very, very smart guy. Went into the IndyCar, IndyCar side before he had over oh, 100. Okay. So yeah. he's got a, a plethora of experience back there. And you talk about it. There is. There's depth in these organizations. And the other piece is, is and this is, this, I think, is part of why NASCAR is a little frustrated with the outcome of, of sure. the appeal situation is COVID made us much more technologically connected. Mm -hmm. So a crew chief can be back at the shop yeah. and be completely tuned. I I've done it. So yeah. you've, I, been, I, you've been in the war room. Been yeah. <laughs> completely tuned into the race. Uh, I had to do it at Darlington. I got we had we had an issue and I got I got removed from the race. It was sure. 2020. But I went back to shop and, and I was I, 
I were, was involved in the call a race from there. So don't think that Alan, the Alan and Cliff and Rudy and <laughs> yeah, you know, they're they're not all just out on the lake someplace. The lake. Yeah, no. they're they're fully involved in this piece, and I think that NASCAR realizes that, and that's why the points penalty, from NASCAR standpoint, losing the points penalty is very disappointing to them because right. that's the piece that they feel like hurt. That's the that's the that's the meat behind this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly, the crew chief being away, the crew chief being crew away. Crew chief being away, and the mo- monetary penalty is not yeah. in the grand scope of things. The points are the piece that that yeah. have the biggest bite. Jeff Mendering career first win, so great for him. Great to get a crew chief mm-hmm. for his first career yes. win. Um, tire strategy, um, boy, tire strategy. You know, it was fascinating going into it because going into it, you have eight new sets plus a qualifier, so nine sets. With the rain out, you went in with ten sets of fresh sticker tires right and yet we still we we had one team that ran out of tires any our multiple teams uh, the one that stands out was martin truex jr but there were other teams in that boat as well well if you look at this and you look at historically how the how the stages race out just to lay out if i laid out the strategy no cautions just looking at it of your 10 sets you start on one right your two stage breaks you're going to put a set on either one of those correct so now you're down to seven yeah now you're down to seven Stage one, we put a competition caution in. Right. So there's a set there. There's a set there. Now we're down to six. Right. So you in the stage two and stage three, those are both in the 160 lap range. Correct. And we showed last year that that 80 some laps needed to be split with a with a stop. Yeah. So the strategy for those two is going to be two and two. Right. Without cautions. So now we're only you've only got two sets left. I, I'm going to bank on having a set for late caution, which means I've only got one that around. I can play around with. And, and, and honestly, as I looked at it, James Small used up his one at lap 47 for a run that was going to be 22 laps long and put himself in a position where cautions could bury him, and they did. Yeah, 25 laps to go. Cautions, you're putting scuffs on everyone else is putting on the, um, on the um, stickers. We had, we had an opportunity with cautions for four sets of tires in that last in that last stage right and that's actually what ended up what happening. I'd be using yeah so that yep. would have been the two for the stage and the two that you had left and yep. uh, they had used one earlier so they they had three in a set of scuffs and unfortunate because martin truex and in, in that 19 car were in a position they they had to speed to win the race yeah and actually that set of tires they used at 47 i actually put them back yeah it set them back a set of tires and they didn't they lost they, they went in 12 Mm-hmm. Had to restart 23rd, only made it back to 14th. So um, as a whole, I'm sure that James looks at that and want, wishes he could do it over. We could have to do it over again. No doubt about it. Good stuff, that's for sure. Speaking of good stuff, Ty Gibbs off to a solid start here. Yes. Three straight ninth place finishes. We're going to talk to his crew chief, Chris Gale. He is our guest here on Crew Call. So we'll talk to Chris in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Todd Gordon and Steve Post, and let's go to the Zoom line. Joining us from over at Joe Gibbs Racing, crew chief for Ty Gibbs on the NASCAR Cup Series, Chris Gale joins us. Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys this morning? We are doing well. We are doing well. Your young race car driver, your team that you guys have put together this year, three straight ninth place finishes. That looks good to me, the radio guy. How does it feel? How does it look as the crew chief leading that operation? It, it it does look good, right? Um, we're happy with that. Like that's where we feel like we need to be. Like we kind of set some goals in the beginning of the year, and and I would tell you that Ty's goals are much higher than all the rest of us that have looked at rookie stats for a long time, right? And know kind of <laughs> how the rookies tend to struggle on the cup side. Um, and, and you want him to have that, right? You want him to shoot for the moon, but what you don't want him to do is if he doesn't necessarily meet his personal expectations, you don't want him to get down about it. And you want to let him know that. He's still on pace with where he should be. And we kind of set a goal like 10th to 15th is where we should run early in the year, right? And if we get something inside the top 10, inside the top five, we're ahead of schedule. And that's a bonus, you know? And so you kind of got caught up in wrecks and different things early in the year. And then we've kind of been getting those finishes here lately. They haven't always been smooth, but we've been getting the finishes the last three weeks. Yeah, really cool. And and, and to your point, 10th to 15th on a, on a rookie, rookie uh, schedule, it's a great place to be. As you look at this, you're kind of hitting that that target. What's your next focus? What's the next piece that you want to push your program to to accomplish on the racetrack? Yeah, I, clean races, to be honest with you. So, like I, I kind of alluded to the fact that you know Richmond was probably the first clean race we've had where we haven't had 
pit road problems, you know, missing the S's and have to do two pass throughs basically during Coda. You know, we got the finishes Atlanta and Coda, but those were far from smooth. You know, we had pit road incidents where we were over the line, you know, those kind of things. And we were just the, the chaotic nature of the end of Coda allowed us to still get a good finish by not being caught up in anything. Atlanta with the nature of super speedway racing allowed us to get back in it because it was packed up enough and you could just let others make mistakes. We talked about Richmond. That wasn't going to be the case, right? Like if you had pit road problems, speeding, bad pit stops, right? That could end your day there and you weren't going to just drive back through the field. So, you know, that was the first race that I feel like we completely went through clean without having a problem. So I think for us, that's how the, the future races need to go. We need to have no problems on pit road and let the car speed speak for itself, you know, and hopefully that gets us in the top five to top 10 range every week. Chris, this this is a radio guy question. I've never been on a team, never driven one of these cars, never crew chief one of these cars. One of my notes from Richmond is messy pit road. Now, you guys had a clean pit road, but you've talked about it. Pit road challenges just seem like they keep happening. I'm like, how do you guys keep speeding? How, how do we keep missing this? How do we keep missing that? Radio guy, Steve, that doesn't make sense to me. Is it is it just because the level, the competition level we're at? Why why are we still th- these things? Why why is all this happening? Because it seems like it's a little bit messy this year. Yeah, it is messy. And so, right, I, I knew it was kind of messy last year, right? It's kind of been messy since you went to the next-gen car and single lugs and all these problems, right? The, the competition's closer, so some of the battling on pit road is tougher and tighter than ever and some of that dictates the outcome of the race right um you know my experience so far is that's the case right you got pit crews that are trying really hard and and we know that like the variability in that mistake ends your day so you know i've been preaching just good consistent stops and having no problems but from our end it's been really we had one issue this weekend from pit crew but it's been more of driver you know crossing over the line, basically not getting in the box properly. That's been more of our problems. And so those are the kind of things we're trying to clean up. But man, you see it, right? You, you could argue that the 11 car was really good this weekend and probably should have, should have, could have won the race and a couple speeding penalties take him out of it. And you can overcome the first one, but you're not going to overcome that late one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of those things, I always look at you guys at, at, at Joe Gibbs Racing you guys have had like lightning fast pit crews. It, it's 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 notorious, right? Ten years it's been that way. And Denny had an eight point two second stop, <laughs> but he also had a twenty second stop. Like to your yep. point, anything goes wrong in these pit stops where they are today. It's it's not it's not a half a second. It's five seconds because of the pace yep. that everybody's at. Do you coach your guys? Um, do you have like a different? Uh, is it conscious effort to talk to your guys about? I don't need the eight second stop. I just need to be consistent. Or, or is it just where the sport is today? Yeah, we do spend that effort, right? I, I, I can't speak to what happened necessarily last year with how that was being handled. But obviously, when you look back at 2022 after not being a part of it, you notice that variability and, and what makes the difference in outcome in races. And that has been a push from our end, not, not just the 54 car. I, I would tell you all of Joe Gibbs Racing. How do we get some – we don't need that absolute last two-tenths of a second every pit stop. But if we can get them all in that – you know, low nine second range, we're going to be competitive and not have the one blow up that takes you out of the, out of the race. You know, if, if it's a one or two position loss for two, three tenths of a second on pit road, that can be overcome. What can't be overcome, like you said, is the 20 second pit stop that costs you 15 spots that kind of takes you out. So there has been a you know definite push to kind of just increase the consistency there. You, you talked a little bit about being on the outside last year. I, I want to ask this, but how's the learning curve been? coming back into the cup garage with this next gen car and being, I, I, I've got to experience a little bit of it, but being a year behind, like it's, you, you've got great teammates and great resources there. And it's not that you've not been racing, but it's a different yep. car. How's that been for you? It is. I think it's good and bad. And I'll give you the good side of it, right? Is the first six months of last year, the first part of the season, right? Was all this learning, everybody throwing something against the wall and seeing what would stick. I kind of got, a chance to miss a lot of that, right? And I missed a lot of the stuff that might be confusing and wasn't good. So I could basically just come in and, okay, well, let me look at the last 12 to 15 races where they kind of have it a little more figured out and not confuse myself with all the earlier stuff. So that part of it's been good, right? You, you make the notebook a little smaller where you understand it better. But some of the in-race stuff, you know, with adjustments where you have to worry about, you know, which way the arrow balance is going versus the mechanical changes you want and, and, and hitting these 
specified shock lengths that you have and these in-race adjustments that you didn't have to worry about with previous Gen 6 cars or the Xfinity cars. Some of that is very interesting where there's kind of, you know, dynamic wedge versus arrow shifting that is completely opposing during the race. And so it, it's very interesting and, and eye-opening to see kind of how you're in more of a box in the race to honestly make great adjustments. Neat. Man, it's fascinating. It really truly is as far as that goes. And 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 neat stuff. The the opportunity to come back to Cup Series racing and the opportunity to do it with the same driver you had last year. You and Ty and and and, and Ty had the 15 races, I believe it was, over at uh over at the 45 car. But but being able to to bring the same driver, same driver, same crew chief combination, how how important has that been for you guys as you've learned this process? Yeah, I think it's just it's just familiarity, right? Um stuff you know we'll go to the simulator and he'll talk about certain things and i'll know ahead like okay yeah this is always kind of what he complains about in the simulator versus real life and i think it shortcuts just some of those communication things that i understand a little better like okay what to listen to what not to listen to um you know the severity of the complaints and how to do that's been the biggest thing for me is there's just a familiarity there of i've got a year and a half experience ahead of anybody else doing that um and, and i think there's whether it's fair or not you know there's some confidence that he has with me on the expanded side just of kind of being through some tough situations and and having conversations about it that he's familiar with me i, I think that's the biggest thing right the car is so different competition level so high that um the rest is hard to say if it's much of an advantage uh, the the psychological side of, of having confidence in each other that's a huge piece to what we race today it's actually one of the things that I feel like we miss uh, and me being an old engineer. I think we, we miss those things. We don't see that piece of the emotional side of what racing is. As we talk about, talk about new adventures, Bristol dirt coming up this weekend. How's your dirt history? Yeah, it has been at least 25 years since I've touched a dirt car, right? It's been a long time. And, and, and again, those were purpose built dirt cars. This is going to be the first time where I take something that is not built for dirt and we try to do it this way. So I don't know. I'm keeping an open mind about it. I'm going to try to make sure that it, it stays fun. Um, knowing that like Ty doesn't have a lot of experience doing it either. I had a few ARCA races. Um, I think Bristol will be distinctly different than those races. Um, so we're going to go into it with an open mind and just try to have fun and then focus on, you know, not making any mistakes in the race, right? That's what really matters. If we can start the race with the same car we start the weekend with, we can make it a little better. If he can learn more during the race and avoid mistakes, whatever we get, we get at that point. Yeah, the Ty's experience are mile tracks at Ducoin and Springfield, flat miles. <laughs> Bristol is not a flat mile, that's for sure. And, uh, and, and, and Chris, obviously yours goes back years and years to Arkansas. Um, mm -hmm. Then how important is there, a, is there a relying on teammates? How do, you, how do you get a baseline to get started on this weekend? Yeah, I think that's what's good for me, right? Like the majority of my crew right is the 18 cup car from last year with kyle who ran really good in this race so they have a baseline setup you know virtually no changes to the cars to speak of probably that are big deal for dirt from from what they raced last year same tire um and then bell right ran really well as well and has lots of experience so i think i've got a you know we can start very similarly to where the 18 did last year as a place to start with ty and practice and then you know what if bell sneaks up on something that he feels is good i have confidence to know that he knows what he's doing dirt and i have no problem just putting that setup in and racing it for sunday and, and and for those that are watching this that don't really understand talk about what's different with the next gen car going to bristol dirt than it was say at richmond yeah right the underbody is totally different right it's got a flat underbody and and not really the diffuser and all that and, and higher ride heights you don't have to worry about hitting the shocks necessarily because they allow you to change those links um that's the biggest difference in the dirt tire, obviously, which is which is much much different than a, than a Richmond. You know, you've got a, a treaded, basically dirt specific tire, um, and the rest I'm going to find out on the fly this weekend how how much that matters actually. Really cool, no doubt. Going to be fun stuff, that's for sure. Looking forward to it. As you look forward beyond Bristol, um, this portion of the season we get into. Let's see, we're going Martinsville, Dover, Talladega, over to Darlington. North Wilkesboro, you know, what's kind of, what's, what's kind of got you excited going forward? What are things you looking at when we move beyond Bristol? Uh, I'm looking forward to Martinsville, Talladega. I think we can be competitive there. I felt like we were competitive at Daytona and they just got caught up with a flat tire running over something late in the race. And we would have had a good shot, you know, to, uh, to compete late in that race. So 
Talladega. And then honestly, where I think we're probably need the most work is some of these intermediates. So like Kansas one that's coming up, I, I'm looking forward to kind of seeing if we can improve from where we were kind of at California and Vegas. Um, that's kind of big on my radar as a, a place that I feel like all of Joe Gibbs racing needs to improve a little bit. Which is, which is kind of interesting because Kansas, Kansas last year was dominated by the Toyotas, but obviously yeah. the arrow shifts that we, or arrow changes that we had to the, all the manufacturers in the off season have changed where a lot's been. Um, as you, as you look at so far, we're what, six, seven races into it. What's yep. been the biggest challenge of the next gen car to you that you didn't expect? Yeah, I think it's just the, the making adjustments in the race, how bad they are in traffic, you know, um, just, you know, I, I tell you, all right, we went to Vegas and we qualified well, and I thought we were going to have a great race and, and just completely missed the balance in the race compared to what we had in practice by ourselves. Um, and then really trying to get that car right in the race and, and make changes on it that affected it. I mean, it was tough. It just really was. And we could never get it right in the race between being in traffic and being out of traffic. And then, you know, Ty has some experience. He talked about the 14, 15 races he did last year with 2311 in that 45 car, but uh, that was probably a big struggle for us as a group. So I guess that's why I want to see like, okay, can we go to Kansas where they were all pretty good last year and improve upon the way we kind of ran at Vegas? Do, do you, and just to build off of that, do you have to think about tuning your car differently if you're running fifth than you do 15th? Like, does the dirty air change the car as it goes through back into the field or, or is that kind of consistent? Uh, you know, I, I think it is a little bit. I'm learning that, you know, I definitely like not practicing in traffic and getting a balance. And then what you actually are in traffic in the race, I think you got to really pay attention to that and make sure that you make smart adjustments for getting in traffic and in, in practice and knowing what you really have there and not by yourself. And I think that's probably, you know, with a rookie crew chief to this car and a rookie driver where you got you have to be on it probably more so than anything else. I mean, you're always going to be at a deficit, right? If you're not the leader, and that kind of is what it is. But you got to have a strong enough car to be able to overcome that and get to the lead. That's, I, I think that's why we talked about earlier the pit stops. You see all the variability with guys leading late. If somebody loses the control of the race, it's a much bigger deal with all these cars being so tighter, you know, from a competition standpoint than they ever were. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff, how these things unfold, that's for sure. Chris, final question. Want to go way off the racetrack? Uh, I was snooping around on social media. Your wife's Twitter handle is Brandy Loves Dogs. So, um, oh, yeah. am, is, am I right? You guys, you've done some dog rescues, and you guys have rescued some dogs. Are you still actively involved in that, or is, uh, it, yes. is that what you're doing? She is absolutely all over that. Like, she... We've never had a dog that we, that wasn't rescued for our personal dogs, and then she is getting my eight year old daughter into it now. Where they're they're basically doing lots of transport of dogs, any dog that they can basically keep for a couple weeks. Um, you know, we had puppies probably four weeks ago that they basically were too young that her and my daughter took care of for three weeks and then passed them on. Um, they, there's basically a whole system of people across the East Coast that like. Past, keep dogs for a couple of weeks, get them to the next people, and they basically just transfer and they just basically just run them up the East Coast to where they may be getting, um, you know, bought somewhere up north, right? And it's just this foster system, temporary foster system. And, and so it's cool to see them do that and something they love. That's what she's passionate about. So that's what's awesome for me. That is really, really cool. Yeah, it's really awesome. Boy, when you're doing something with dogs or kids, you're, 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 you're doing the good Lord's work when you're doing that. That is really, really neat to see. That's for sure. Chris, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. And we uh, certainly wish you the best uh, with, uh, with all your dirt experience headed up to Bristol this week. We wish you the best. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's going to be fun either way. There we go. Chris Gale joining us from over at Joe Gibbs Racing. Stay with us. More in just a moment. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Todd Gordon and Steve Post continuing on. Always love talking to Chris Gale. Um, just so much respect for him. Obviously, and it's and it's an, an off-limits topic, but what Ty has been through in the last six months of his life uh, has been challenging. And I think from the outside looking in, Chris has done a really, really nice job with a young man that's been through a lot in his personal life. And not only Ty, but Joe Gibbs Racing. All right. of Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, yeah. it's Coy was involved. He right. was he was part of the group. I mean, it's he's part of the DNA of that program. So 
I think it's affected all of them. And, and out of respect, I would never ask. Yeah. You know, it's just, just that's, I couldn't imagine having to deal with those things and, and what's going on. But um, I think Chris has done a great job. You know, had the opportunity with Eric Jones. Yep. Kind of came to cup with Eric. Right. And then when that kind of, Eric kind of went, went away, then, and Joe Gibbs has been this way, right? They been promote, a lot of that. They promoted, down, yeah, they and, promoted yeah. crew chiefs and driver pairs. Yeah. And I think there's, yeah. you know, Chris brought it up there, the, the, the trust that they have in each other, the confidence they have in each other to get through tough times. It's, it, it, I think there's a benefit to that. So, um, you know, great to see them have the opportunity again and, and they're doing good things. I think, uh, you know, you talked about it, three ninth place finishes in a row. Um, they're, do, they're accomplished what they want. Be nice to see them score a little more stage points, you know, mm-hmm. putting, putting that together. But I think that's on Chris's radar and they're, they're doing what they need to 20th in points and, yep. uh, starting to build some momentum. Right. Right. Exactly. I think it's, uh, I think it's been a neat, uh, neat, neat thing to see. And Chris's leadership has been so good over there. Really has done a nice job for years, actually. But uh, it's good to, good to see him having the success and, and, and growing this program with Ty, uh, an uber talented young race car driver that is going to be part of NASCAR's future and a mm-hmm. uh, big part of NASCAR's future. So neat, neat stuff. That's for sure. Speaking of neat stuff, Bristol dirt. All right, crew chief, what are you, uh, what are you looking for? What are you thinking we're going to see here for Bristol dirt? Yeah. Cause you, you, similarly, big side there, right? you, you, you have, uh, you have oodles more dirt experience than Chris does, which yeah. means one, one race, one race, <laughs> one race. Yeah. And, and Ryan and I, at the end of stage two, he's like, this thing's the biggest piece of junk. We, I'm like, Hey dude, I, I'm an asphalt racer. I, yeah. Obviously, the things that I thought we should do is going the wrong way. So we're going to undo all those and go the other right, way. And right. ended, ended up turning it back around. We came out of there with an eighth place finish in that last stage. Um, cool, cool event. You know, yeah. it's it's in non-competitive pit stop. Right. So so when you look at it, like if the caution comes out in the middle of a stage, you can't come take tires. You're not. I mean, the yeah. way it's set up, the only time you can put tires on is at the stage breaks or replacing a flat. So right. if you had a flat, you can come put one on. You can't put four, you put one on. You can replace whatever's flat. So um, see where it goes. Three-minute breaks for these guys. If the, if at the stage break, break, they decide they want to come to pit road, uh, they all come to pit road. How they come to pit road, they'll leave pit road as long as they make their, their three-minute three window. window. Right. So in three minutes, you'll see tires, fuel. You'll see guys, and that's one of the things that's going to be interesting. They have the opportunity. They can change air boxes uh, mm-hmm. because the air filters are inside of it, and they don't want to get that all plugged up. So um the there's this outer wear which is a fine mesh screen that they'll put over the grills most of most teams will they velcro on and off so they'll put those on and off just to clean up and make sure that the air can get through the radiator um it'll be some different things you'll see guys out there with scrapers yeah. <laughs> like snow scrapers that they're scraping mud out uh and uh and cleaning up the windshields that's going to be you know depending on whether the track is a little damp right. or whether it's dusty uh inside and outside so it's, it's a challenge here the air box what where is what how do you how do you how would you change out the air box on these cars yeah so when you when you talk about it these cars uh, you know the the air for the engine comes out of the ductwork right with the radiator so there's a there's a carbon snorkel that comes off the radiator ductwork and then there's an intermediate piece and then the air box actually has a rubber bulb seal that slides into that the, okay the, so the, the the part that the you know like our old cars were that had a you know a canister on the top and bottom with a element inside of it it's much like that it's just carbon fiber and plugs forward so it's a pretty simple it's one nut it's a half inch wrench uh, that, that like like the old school carburetors were you know it's, it's yeah, one stud that you take that off a couple wires because there's a couple sensors in it pop that off pop a new one on guys will have that where they're already preset that i would assume they'll just change out the whole carbon piece uh back yeah. and forth but mm. pretty quick change something that could be done in probably less than a minute and uh and Keep you know, clean air flowing. Yeah, keep the, it so that the engine actually has a filter and doesn't get plugged up and, and lose power. Gosh, I'm I'm envisioning my dryer at home is what I'm envisioning. It's really kind of comparable to that, making yeah. sure clean air, making sure you're getting getting clean clean fresh air to the engine. Yeah, because because any any of that dusty air is you know, be some. When I was there, it was the old car. We had a cowl on top, so it wasn't force fed off the off the radiator duct. But now the inlet for the engine's right down there at the ra- racetrack. So where the, where the dirt is, you want to keep it clean. Wow, fascinating stuff. It really is going to be interesting. That as well. Motor Racing Network will be at Bristol for the Truck Series. It's the Weather Guard Truck Series Dirt Race at Bristol. Our airtime is Saturday night, seven thirty Eastern time. 
and our friends at the Performance Racing Network have all of the Cup Series coverage, so practice qualifying and Sunday night's race. Going to be a fun, fun weekend up at Bristol, and uh, you know, I think the other thing that's kind of interesting about this, uh, talking to some crew members, over-the-wall crew members, there's a lot of crew members with an off weekend. Yes. Because of the the no need for the high-speed pit stops, a little bit of a breather for some of the over-the-wall crew guys, and that's uh, that, that's always welcome. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good kind of recovery from any minor injuries you got in the first seven races it's a long grueling season so keeping up with that is a it's going to be a big deal truck race yes truck race as i looked at it, i think 41 entries for 36 spots and we've got william byron joey logano and chase briscoe in trucks that are that have got to wait race their way in see that's It'll what you see i see tanner carrick jonathan davenport some dirt track which i think is the beauty of what we have is the yes it's the beauty of what we've seen this year we've had formula one racers at coda we have dirt track racers at Bristol. I just love yes. what we're seeing in the sport right yeah, now. Yeah, I think that I think that truck race is going to be going to be a, a great show, and and it's going to be exciting to see who can get into the show. I want to go talk. I, I do want to. I, I know we're wrapping up here, but Carson Hosevar, so close, so close, so close, so close, so close. Um, in, in position, in took position advantage of the situation so many times. Finally. Finally, actually, would actually had one drop into his lap. Basically, yep. I mean, he was he was he did yep. all the right stuff. But uh, when you have a young race car driver like that, Phil Gould, of course, a great crew chief on that, yep. has got multiple wins in the series. Um, I think Carson Hosevar is one of those that once the seal is cracked on Victory Lane, could get back there on a regular basis. Yeah, I, just I think feel he's I feel that way. way. I feel that way. I think he's uh, he's one. We always talked about. I'll, I'll go back. I'm I'm dating myself, but you know, early fourteen fifteen. Kyle Larson finished second a lot of times. Yeah, that's right. And Joey and I talked about once that kid start, wins, he's he's going to be tough. And yeah. and and he, I mean, he's tough. <laughs> yeah. But I right think up to uh, I think in, right I up think, to it, including Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Carson's got a long future ahead of him. Nick Sanchez led, oh led most of the truck race, got loose there on on you yeah. know that's that's part of what truck racing is on the green white checkers. But uh, great, there there's a great future in truck racing yeah. right now. We uh, we had all the Arca, a lot of the Arca races last year, and I was impressed by Nick Sanchez. Yeah. What I just was impressed by him, and we've got him paired up with Danny Stockman, one of the good guys who are in the garage area. Yep. Danny, Danny just loves working with that kid, and so I, I love it. Truck Series Racing, and the truckers will be in action on Saturday night. MRN will be there. We do appreciate Chris Gale for joining us over at Joe Gibbs Racing. Always good to catch up with him, but more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Crew Call on the Motor Racing Network.